These days, fight sticks come in all manners of shapes, sizes, and even colors, and are readily available just about anywhere. But this wasn't always the case, and the fight sticks that we have today are the result of decades of hard work and experimentation by players and enthusiasts alike. Folks like Markman, who at EVO 2022 walked us through the event's stick museum to give us a small walkthrough of the history of fight sticks to explore their past, present, and potential future. What got me into arcade sticks? You know, I've been a fan of fighting games my whole life, and I didn't really get into arcade sticks until probably the early 2000s where I got my first arcade stick. It was a Tekken 3 arcade stick. It was a Hori stick. And once I got that first real piece of my collection, I didn't look back since then. Eventually, I ended up working for a company called Mad Cats, and we made the Street Fighter 4 range of arcade sticks and products. And from there on out, my life changed completely, and I got to travel the world with Arcade 6, creating Arcade 6, working with different fighting game communities, and it's led me to so many great things in my life. And one of the things you'll see here in the Arcade Stick Museum is how things evolved over time, where the arcade stick industry really started to boom from 2009 onwards, from the small beginnings it had in the early 90s. So we are at the very beginning of our timeline, the humble beginnings of fighting games. You know, obviously Street Fighter came out in 1987, but it wasn't really until the World Warrior in 1991 where things really started picking up and people got more competitive on the sticks. So if we look at the history of arcade sticks, you know, dating all the way back in 1994, Moss Systems, rest in peace, Tao and his family, they're pioneers in terms of what we have as far as arcade quality controls. We have the Supernova, the Moss Systems arcade stick, which eventually evolved to the Super Pro as well. So the Moss System stick is probably the stick that has been used throughout most of time. You know, there was an early era of Evo and a lot of people until 2009 played mainly on either the control pads that you have at home or on a Moss stick or a custom arcade stick. So these half parts have such longevity, such storied history with players at Evo. You've seen storied champions from Marvel vs. Capcom 2, Super Turbo, Capcom vs. SNK 2. Any of those old games, they probably played on one of these. Also, on the other side of the coin, on the Japanese side, the Neo Geo came out. This was from the Neo Geo arcade cabinets. You guys might remember the big red cabinets. But aside from the Neo Geo cabs, they also had the home version of the Neo Geo uh, home console, the Gold System. They had an arcade stick, four button setup, which was iconic at the time. And of course, it really revolutionized the quality of home level arcade controls. Because not only, it didn't come with a control pad, it came with an arcade stick. And that was very different at the time. So going on in the 90s, there was, you know, arcade sticks that were out there, but there weren't really quality arcade sticks until, in my opinion, for Japanese style until this point. This is the Hori Namco arcade stick that came out with Tekken 2 and Soul Edge, Soul Blade. And this was a six button arcade controller that emulated what the Japanese arcade gamers were looking for. And in my opinion, is one of the greatest arcade sticks, especially compact arcade sticks of all time. Definitely one of my favorites in my collection. A lot of people have used this. The legendary Ryan Hart used this way back in the day when he first traveled to America and he played in EC3 and he ended up being some of the Korean and American champions. Classic arcade stick has so much history behind it. But moving further on in the timeline, we have the Green Goblin, aka the Agitech or the ASCII Dreamcast arcade stick, which came out at the time when we were getting such great arcade ports of games, Marvel vs. Capcom, a Street Fighter Alpha 3, Marvel vs. Capcom 2. This stick really started putting people on notice when it came to Japanese parts. And underneath it, we have the Hori Real Arcade Pro, which came out during the PS2 era people started taking notice because this was one of the first very customizable arcade sticks. It had quick disconnects, really accessible, and it set the arcade stick enthusiast world on fire because people not only started importing arcade sticks, which really became a thing at the time, but it led them to want this type of arcade stick in the US. And that actually brings us to the next era of arcade sticks, which is this, which is the first Hori Real Arcade Pro style arcade stick that we got in the West with the Tekken 5 10th anniversary arcade stick, which came bundled with the game. And I'll tell you what, so many people played on this arcade stick, so many people bought Tekken 5 just to get this arcade stick that not necessarily played Tekken, but wanted to experience a quality arcade stick that they could have in their home. That's how hungry and how thirsty people were in 2005 when they wanted to have a Japanese style arcade stick, but they didn't have the means. Oh boy. So let me talk about the great arcade stick boom, the great arcade stick era that happened in 2008 and 2009. So in 2007, this is a, a very inspirational stick. We had the Virtua Stick High Grade from Sega Logistics Laboratory, modeled after the Virtua Fighter 4 arcade cabinet. So they released the Virtua Stick High Grade as a very quality arcade consumer stick. And this was the arcade stick that I actually used and referenced in creating the Mad Cats arcade stick based off the Vulix arcade cabinet. But really, the customizability, the build quality, the inspiration came from the Virtua Stick High Grade. 
In releasing the Street Fighter 4 range of products, this was my first project with Mad Cats that I actually worked on. I worked on all the Mad Cats products from the Street Fighter 4 era all the way up until 2016. And this was the one I think that really changed the perception of Japanese style controls to the masses in the West. This is the best selling arcade stick of all time. It joined the boom of Street Fighter 4 when in 2009 we went from having, you know, hundreds of people at tournaments to having EVO 2009 with over a thousand people in the bracket for Street Fighter 4 alone. So it was a momentous time for the fighting game community. Not only that, the community, the Tech Talk community from different websites and different communities really started to make different products and build different options and customization for these type of types of products. So as time went on, we saw different variations of a lot of arcade sticks. A lot of companies really saw the success of bringing quality arcade style controls. We got companies like Hori, we have companies like PDP, and even community-based companies like eToki really coming to the scene, bringing high quality arcade parts that people would use to play in tournaments and win in tournaments. It's also the change where we saw these companies starting to invest in the community sponsor events and sponsor players. In uh, 2010, Mad Cats ended up sponsoring Daigo the Beast, Umehara, Tokido, Mago, such great and notable Japanese players and started enabling them to travel the world more and really support these events and these players on a level that hasn't been seen before. So seeing that kind of boom and seeing other companies, not just Mad Cats, but Hori and Razor supporting these players directly, I think was directly attributed to not only the growth of the fighting games, but also the arcade stick market. So fun story, and one of the cool things that we did in 2010 is I convinced Mad Cats to create a limited run of gold arcade sticks. We made 24 of these numbered arcade sticks to give out as prizes for the people or the top place at the top eight of Super Street Fighter 4 at EVO. And at the time, we've never done anything like this. This ended up being a trophy stick for a lot of those players. But not only that, it's just a fun thing to do to be able to reward players. Evo has done this a few times throughout the, the years. And again, in 2022 with the new arcade stick as well, this gold edition. So it's become somewhat of a tradition as well. But you know, it just, for me, I just wanted to do something cool and exclusive. And I think having exclusives and having a sense of people wanting something or fighting to get something is really, really cool. For this particular stick, there's a fun tidbit. So we made 24 sticks, and the reason why we made 24 of these sticks is I looked at what was coveted when it came to collecting and cool stuff. So there's the Nintendo World Championships cartridge. There's only 24 of those gold cartridges in existence. I referenced that into the creation of this one. But yeah, stuff like this is the behind the scenes stuff that maybe people don't know. But there's so much story behind not only this arcade stick, but every one of these arcade sticks that are there. And I hope that you guys can Find that here at the Arcade Stick Museum. We've done write-ups for every single one of these arcade sticks. So now we're at another point where I think things are gonna change again. There's new games on the horizon. We have a new console, we have a new platform as well. You know, things have changed quite a bit in the past few years, but a lot of people are waiting for official PS5 licensed arcade sticks. They're waiting for different options that they can use on their PC. They're waiting for different options that they could use on the go. I think PC gaming has really leveled it up and you gotta think about it, in EVO 2022, Every single game in the lineup is also playable on PC. So that means arcade sticks, controllers, fighting games have never been as accessible as they are before. I think we're gonna see another boom in terms of having more accessibility in terms of arcade controllers and having these companies make and release different arcade sticks and arcade style controllers to the masses. And I'm very excited to see that. And it's a new era. It's not only about the traditional arcade stick that we see. We're seeing leverless controllers. We're seeing all style button controllers. We're seeing even arcade style pads with arcade stick levers and elements of the arcade being made and available to consumers now. I think we're in an amazing time where people have a different type of focus on evolving the arcade style market. And it's now based on ideas because you know, arcades are dead. They haven't evolved in so long, but we're now in a point where people are starting to find freedom with how they make their controls and they're having different types of influence from so many gamers that are out there really showing what works for them. We've seen such a change in terms of what top players use and I'm very excited to see what happens in the next few years as we see these players rise and we see the companies that support them as well. The history of fight sticks is as vast and varied as the controllers themselves. So if you'd like to see me dive deeper into these controllers in a future video, let me know in the comments below. And if you're at EVO this weekend, be sure to stop by the Stick Museum yourself. Now that you're a bit more familiar with fight sticks, check out my documentary on the history of CEO and see if you can recognize any throughout the video. There's two moments that I would say put CEO on the radar for me. Maybe three. One was a K-Brad Stone Cold entrance. When I saw that, I thought, man, like these guys know wrestling and if they're gonna go that far to reproduce like a Stone Cold Steve Austin entrance and they're fighting in a ring, these guys must like wrestling. Like that's pretty cool.